to the first ever Kids Club Online. So this year, things might look a little bit different and we're really, really sad that we can't gather face to face, which we love to do with you guys, but we can gather online and in our homes. And I know that incredible things can still happen at home. So this week, we are concentrating on the gifts that the children received from Father Christmas in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe from Narnia. So first of all, we are going to get ready to praise and worship Jesus. Are you ready? Such a lot when you've got not a lot. What? Be happy. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. I really love that song. It's brilliant. It's really energetic and I love the jumping up and down and everything. Um, and um, this week we have a memory verse and our memory verse was in that song. So you're going to be hearing quite a bit of that song because, you know, let's learn this memory verse. So our memory verse this week is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't know whether you noticed that in the um, song, but next time you hear it, you might want to listen out to it. Um, and we're going to be doing a little bit on the memory verse each day. And in some of the talks, we're going to just touch on the memory verse, which is, I don't know whether you can remember it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, now we've got the challenge with, with Jocelyn and we've got a challenge every day and Jocelyn's done them all. And so let's see what she's got for us today. Hi guys, it's Joss. I'm on the beach today, as you can see. So your challenge is to make a picture out of something unusual. I've made a lion like Aslan out of seaweed and sticks and shells. Come have a look. Mm -hmm. 
my lion. So you can make your picture out of things you can find at your house. Sticks in your garden, maybe dry pasta in the house, or stones. Have fun. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. That was brilliant. Um, if you can, can you try it and do that challenge today and send us a picture of what you do? Because I'd love to see all your inventive things that you've made. Well, now we've got the Bible reading and we've got my talk. I mean, you're going to be seeing quite a lot of me today. <laughs> but today's Bible reading is about Peter healing a lame beggar. And Eileen's going to be reading to it to us. So thank you so much, Eileen. Come on, I've got a story for you. One afternoon, Peter and John were going up to the temple to pray. A man who had been lame all his life was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his full attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, I don't have any money to give you, but I do have something else to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Getting hold of his hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankle became strong. The man jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognised him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The man held on to Peter and John, and all the people were astonished and came running to them in the temple. When Peter saw the crowd, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man who you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him. Hiya guys, I hope this morning's going well for you. And if you don't know me, I'm Hannah and I'm part of the church family and youth group here at St Andrews. And I'm going to be talking to you today about healing. Now, you might remember from the film that Father Christmas gives Lucy her presents. Although Father Christmas is the one delivering the presents, it's actually Aslan giving these gifts to the children. We saw that Aslan, through Father Christmas, gave Lucy the gifts of a cordial made of the juice of one of the fire flowers that grow in the Mountain of the Sun, which she can use if she or any of her friends are hurt to make them better, and a dagger that she is to use when she is in great need but not in battle. When the time comes, she uses her cordial to heal many people, but one of the main people she heals is her brother, Edmund, who is about to die. In the story, we see the gift Aslan has given to Lucy through Father Christmas, used to save Edmund from death. But not only this, but to give him a new life, one where his past mistakes of following and helping the White Witch were forgiven. In the Bible, you might have heard about Jesus healing lots of people. For example, Jesus met one man who was paralysed so he couldn't move or walk. And Jesus said, get up, carry your mat and walk. And he did. You may have heard stories like this and thought, well, that's just because he's Jesus. God can do that sort of stuff, but not me. Well, guess what? Jesus can give us the gift of healing too. All we need to do is pray using Jesus' name and he can heal through us. We see this in the Bible too, when Peter heals a lame beggar. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ walk. 
and the beggar not only walks, but goes away jumping. And this isn't a gift that's just limited for those in the Bible, but the Holy Spirit can work through us too and heal people. Well, last year, I prayed with some others for lots of people to be healed, and it was my first time. And it was an amazing few days. In some people, we saw instant changes in their health when we prayed. And in others, we can't really see any visible or identifiable change. But every single time I felt so close to God, I could feel his presence there with us. We experienced the power of the Holy Spirit when praying for these people. And it was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. Now, can you remember the memory verse? Well done if you can. If you weren't quite sure, it's I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can't do these things on our own. We can only do them through God. When we see someone healed, we can sometimes think that we have done something or that it's through our power or our strength that that person was healed. But we need to be reminded that the Holy Spirit is actually working through us. And it's the Holy Spirit which has healed someone. We're a bit like Father Christmas in the film. Just like Aslan is the one actually giving the gifts to the children and Father Christmas is delivering them, the Holy Spirit is actually doing the healing. And we are just delivering that healing. The Holy Spirit is working through us. This was one thing I needed to be reminded of when we had seen people healed. I would go and tell people how we had healed people and how amazing it was to experience us healing people. But I was reminded by my friend that, of course, it wasn't by my power that people had been healed. It was the Holy Spirit working through us. Now, I've done a lot of talking about healing, but what about actually praying for healing? Well, last year, I learned a really easy way to pray for healing. And just as I learned last year, I want to show you how you can pray for people to be healed too. And I'd love to see you guys praying for each other, just as I have prayed for people. So here we go. First of all, when you're praying with someone else, it can be helpful to put your hands on them. Now you need to check if they're okay with it first. And obviously with social distancing and lockdown, this may be impossible. So don't worry if you can't. But it could be good to place a hand on their shoulder or somewhere where they need healing. Then the next thing might seem really weird. It's good to keep your eyes open. Yes, I know it probably sounds really weird, but it's important that you as the person praying for them can see if something's happening or if they're going to fall or if they're reacting in any way. Now when actually praying, it may seem like prayers have to be really long and complicated because sometimes the grown-ups do like really long prayers, but that just isn't the case. <laughs> We, all we need to do is pray something really short, like, I pray that you would heal this illness or pain in Jesus' name, Amen. Then wait for God to move. This may take a couple of seconds or minutes, but give time and space for the Holy Spirit to move. Remember that it isn't you healing someone, but it's God working through you. Now you might be able to see when the person is coming out of prayer, because you've got your eyes open, if they open their eyes or become a bit restless or fidgety. Then when we pray, we need to ask the person that we're praying for, what has God done? Maybe he's healed what they wanted, or they felt really peaceful, or maybe it seemed like nothing really happened. No matter what happened, the last thing is really important. We need to say thank you. Even if it seemed like God didn't do anything, he is still there and working for our good. So last of all, we need to say thank you. Something like, thank you, Father, for working in our lives for good. Now, sometimes when we pray for healing, it happens straight away, in front of our very eyes. But sometimes this healing may take years of praying before the person gets better. This doesn't mean that God doesn't care. It just means that maybe it's not part of God's big plan for their lives for that thing to be healed right now. So don't worry, just keep praying. The power of healing can work for anything, from the tiny things like a little paper cut to the huge things like removing a cancer. This week, I challenge you to pray for healing. 
if your sibling subs their toe or your parent has a headache or even if someone you know is suffering from a long-term medical condition. Try praying for them by placing your hand on them, if they're okay with that and it's possible, praying a really short prayer using Jesus' name and waiting for the Holy Spirit to move, then asking them what's happened and thanking God for what he has done. And don't forget, it isn't through your strength that that person is healed. It's only through Christ that they are healed. Please get a parent or guardian to let us know if you've got any stories of healing or stories of praying for healing, because we'd love to hear them. And just before I go, I think it'd be great if we pray. So, dear Lord, thank you for the gift of healing. We are so fortunate that you hear our prayers and are always working for our good. Please give us the confidence to pray for healing this week. And please move in our lives when we pray as we know that you do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I hope that gave you something to think about in that talk. And we're now going to go on to our craft, which Sally is doing for us. I love Sally doing the crafts. It's actually brilliant. I just love it. Um, so thank you so much, Sally. Hello. Happy half term, everybody. And here we're going to do Lucy's prayer jar. Now you don't need to have a jar, you could do a box or a tub, anything that you've got. So here we go. You can get a piece of post-it note, or small pieces of paper, and you can write your prayer on the piece of paper. Or you can get some string, let me cut this piece off first. You can have ribbon if you want, it'd be fancy. and you can roll it, I've practiced there, look. And roll it. And use tinier pieces of paper if you want. So there you have your prayer written on your piece of paper. Let's see if I can do this without it coming undone. Even if it ran like that, and pull it. I might be able to tie it into a bow. And then you can pop your prayer into your jar there. Now, you might get a few prayers in your jar and you might want a little book so that if any of your prayers that you've put in your jar or your tub get answered, you can write them down in a book. And I've got a card that I'm going to pop in there as well. You're all children of God through faith. I'm going to pop that in there and then I've got some hearts and we can try and decorate your prayer jar with them. So there's a half term project for you. You can make them as fancy or as big or as small as you want. Well, let Abby and I know and then we'll be able to see. But don't forget, prayers are not always answered quickly. Some can take some time. So there you go. Now, if you can try making that craft um, this week and send us some pictures of what you get up to, that would be absolutely brilliant. We'd love to see them. Now we've got a silly game with the youth and let's see what they've got up to today. Hello, welcome to Silly Games. Today we've got with us Hannah, Eleanor, Abby, Amelia and Mr. Craig Holden. I hope you've had a fab morning so far. We're just going to play a silly game now. And this game, we are going to challenge you to do it with your brothers and sisters, your mums and dads, your grannies and grandpas, whoever you live at home with. Challenge you to do that today with them. So these guys are just like you. They have no idea what game we're going to do right now. And this game is a fun game. I've not thought about it, so I'm going to take part as well. Um, but what we are going to do is get a 30 second timer ready. I've got 30 seconds on my phone and you can do that on your timers at home. So what I'm going to do, guys, is set this timer and you have 30 seconds to find the biggest thing in your house that you are allowed to carry without with parents permission don't take off any picture frames on the wall without your parents permission please 
the biggest thing in your house and the smallest thing and you only have 30 seconds so it's the biggest and smallest thing you can find in 30 seconds are you ready three two one go Such a lot when you got not a lot. Why am not happy? Three, two, one. <laughs> timer, timer, timer. Run, Amelia. <laughs> well done, guys. So, to determine the winner, it could be the biggest and smallest things, but we'll do. The biggest and smallest things and the quickest time together. So it might not be the fastest person who was back. It could be the person who found the biggest thing. So we'll do that. Hannah, could you show us your items? What was the smallest thing you found in your house? I've got a 5p coin. Well done, Hannah. Give her a round of applause. Thank That's very good. She needs to think of money. <laughs> and what is the largest thing you found in your house? I've got a picture frame, which usually hangs here, but you know. Yeah. So you didn't take it off your parents' wall. No. <laughs> well done, Hannah. That is awesome. Thank you. Eleanor, what was the smallest thing you found? I got a hair grip. A hair grip. Well done, Eleanor. That's really small. What about the largest? I got a blanket. It opened out bigger. That is super large. You have to pull it all out for us to determine if it's really big, Eleanor. That, so is that, cool. is massive. that is massive. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Well done, Eleanor. That is humongous. Thank you very much. Amelia, <laughs> what was the smallest thing you two found in the house? Uh, a, rubber, a little rubber band. Wow. Well done, girls. What was the largest thing you found? <laughs> a hoover. Well done. Awesome. That is good thinking. Right, Craig, what was the smallest thing in the house you could find? Powder and earpiece. Hey, well done. And then, my, so that's what I found. And then the largest thing has been taken away from my son. <laughs> oh my uh, I quickly get it, I quickly get it. One minute, one minute. Uh, it's one of his toys. Hey, well oh. done. There we go. Craig, we all want it back. That's his toy. Right, so my smallest thing that I found was a little Lego person. <laughs> I'm upstairs in my house today, so that was the first thing I could find. And then the biggest thing <gasps> was a teddy horse. I thought that was quite good. And did you see, guys, how fast I was back? I thought it was about the quickest. But who had the largest thing and the smallest thing and was back the quickest? I'm not quite sure, so I don't know whether Hannah will update us later on in the comments of who was the quickest and the biggest and smallest things. So I hope you all have a fab time challenging everyone and see you next time. Bye. Wasn't that great? I know that we had great fun filming it. Um, yeah, just and try and do it at home and send us some pictures, um, what you got, um, how you did, yeah. Um, and now we are coming to a point where we are gonna worship God again. Um, we've got another song, you might know this, you might not do, but if you just try and follow along and do the actions, yeah, I'm sure that you'll love it. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise 
There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and power Our God Our God Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Our God is greater Our God is stronger Higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? What could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer, awesome in power Our God, our God And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand against? What can stand against? What can stand I love that song and I love the words and it's just brilliant and I'm sure by the end of the week you will have those actions nailed. Now we're coming to the end of our time together which is very sad because I've loved being with you and I've loved doing this um, but just before we go shall we pray and thank God for what he's done today. So as we pray, you might want to put your hands together to stop you fidgeting and close your eyes just so that you're not distracted by anything around you. Thank you, God, that we can gather together online to learn more about you and to have fun at the same time. Please may you help us to not rely on our own strength, but to know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. It's been lovely to be with you and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming.